Hey y'all, welcome to the library at home. My name's Kelsey. Today we're talking about MLA citation. As a teacher of mine once said, MLA citation is not the sexiest subject, but honestly, it's one of the most important things you can learn. When you write an essay, you become a scholar. You're entering into a conversation with other scholars who have written about and are writing about your topic. When you want to use their evidence in your own essay, either to prove a point or to argue a controversy, you're going to have to cite your source. MLA citation is not that hard once you get an understanding of the different building blocks of a citation. Every end text citation you write is going to be built off of three basic pieces of information. First, you're going to look for the author of the source, you're going to list the title of the source, and then you're going to list any publication information you have about that source. It's a little bit different when you're working with a print source versus a web source, so let's go ahead and look at both of those styles. All right, I'm citing a print book. What do I need to find? I need to look for the author's name, the title of the book, and then the publication information. And when I say publication information, I mean the publisher of the book. This is going to be a company that paid for the book to come out. And then the year the book was published. Once I have all those pieces of information, I can start building my citation. I can find all the information I need for my citation by looking at the book's front cover and the title page. As you can see here, if I look at the front cover of Station Eleven, I see that the author is Emily St. John Mandel, and when I look at the title page, I can see that the book was released by Alfred A. Knopf in 2014. Now I just need to fill in the blanks of my citation pattern with all of that information I pulled from my book. As you can see, I now have a citation that starts with my author's name, St. John Mandel, comma, Emily, period. We always put our author's last name first in MLA. In the next section of my citation, I have the title of the book, Station Eleven, with a period after it. I'm underlining this title because we always underline or italicize the titles of long works. And then I follow it up with my publication information, in this case, Alfred A. Knopf, 2014, period. Put that all together on your Works Cited page and you get a little something that looks like this. We're following a similar pattern when we cite a source from the web, however our title information is going to change a little bit. Rather than citing the title of the entire website that we're on, we're going to cite the title of the article we're reading, and then, as part of our publication information, we'll cite the title of our website, the date that this article was published, and then we'll add the URL, or the web address, where we found our article. We can find all of our citation information by looking at the top of our web page. Here, you see at the very top of the page the URL bar. I'm going to need that in my publication information. Moving down, I'm going to see in yellow the title of my website, Vox in this case. Below that, I'll see the title of the article I'm reading, the best book I've ever read about trans women's friendships. And then as I go below that, I'll see the byline or my author line, where I see the author's name, Emily Vanderwerf, and beside that, the date the article was published, May 13th, 2020. You know the drill. We're going to put all of that information we just gathered into our citation pattern. Start with your author, last name first, Vanderwerf, comma, Emily, period. Then put in the title of your article, this time in quotation marks, because it's the title of a short work. The best books I've ever read about trans women's friendships, period. Then you'll put in your publication information, starting with your website title. Vox is going to go underlined, because it's the title of a long work, a website. We'll put a comma, then we'll add our date, 13 May 2020, a comma, and then we'll end with our URL address with a period. When you put all of that together on your Works Cited page, it looks like this. Well, there you have it. Those are the basics of MLA citation for both a print source and a web source. Now, with different types of sources you work with, 
say, a YouTube video or a work from the library databases, you'll find that you need to either add or subtract information from those basic patterns. You can find all of the patterns in detail listed in our common writing textbook, Easy Writer, or in the MLA official guide. You can find both of these books at the TVCC library. Happy citation, everyone. See you next time.